Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. My name is Jamana Tarek Nabil Abdurasik. I'm studying for a master's degree in petroleum engineering at University of Houston, and I will be your moderator this afternoon. Today, we're pleased to welcome Dr. Mohamed Gharib, a very special guest from Egypt. Dr. Mohamed Gharib has a PhD in petroleum engineering, specifically in artificial lift, production engineering, and operations. Dr. Gharib is a technical and business professional with over 34 years of experience in oil and gas business operations, management, engineering, sales, and teaching. Dr. Gharib was the Eastern Hemisphere Technical Director at Lufkin, as well as the Regional Technical Director of the Middle East, North Africa, and Turkey at General Electric Oil and Gas. He then worked as the Vice President of the Eastern Hemisphere SSI Lift. Now he works as the Strategic Business Director for the Eastern Hemisphere at Weatherford and a Petroleum Engineering Professor at Future University in Egypt. And today he will continue to share with us his expert opinion on the latest artificial lift technologies. If you haven't already, please make sure to check out our previous sessions on PioPetro YouTube channel and join our Facebook page, Arab Oil and Gas Academy for the latest updates on our upcoming courses. Please feel free to send your questions in the chat box and we will answer as many questions as possible. With that, I ask you to give your full attention to Dr. Mohamed Gharib and help me in welcoming him. Please welcome one of my all-time favorite professors, Dr. Mohamed Gharib. Hi, Dr. Gharib, thanks for joining us this afternoon to pick up where we left off in the Artificial Lift Technologies course. Thank you, Jumana. Thanks a lot. <laughs> uh, good morning, good evening, uh, and good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, we are still continuing our subject of artificial lift technology, and as I mentioned always in, in the beginning, that's a fundamental of artificial lift. You know. I'll try to give to you as much as I can all the basics, all the basics of uh, the artificial lifts, uh, especially. Uh, um, the main youth uh, worldwide, like ESP, road lift, uh, PCP, uh, and uh, also gas lift to start to be more used for the time being, and so on. Uh, we already covered some of this artificial lift in our previous uh, pictures. We now just uh, we try today to highlight, give you some highlight about one of the main a new common used artificial lift system is called progressive cavity pumping system. Progressive cavity pumping system, it's one of the newest artificial lifts. They start using in, since um, about almost uh, 80 years, a little bit more than that. And they start to gain more, you know, just more advantage over the, uh, the times with improvement in the technology. This system before is limited just for surface uh, transportations and for just some surface industries. Uh, and also they start to use it as a very sharp, very sharp walls. Initially, this type of lift used only for heavy crude oil. Currently, if you use for most of the crude oils, you know. The progressive cavity bombing system, it's one of the very easy samples, very easy, very simple technique of artificial lift. Uh, system, you know. Uh, this, as I mentioned before, this is type of artificial lift. It just will be belonging the mechanical assist type of artificial lift system. We already covered, as I said before, the road lift system. We covered the ESP system, and today we plan to talk about progressive cavity pumping system. And the uh, next lecture we plan to go for gas lift and uh, hydraulic jet bump. And if there is a time, also we can give some hint about plunger lift uh, and foam lift. While this is ty two types for artificial lift, currently start to be more used, especially for the watering and liquefaction of the gas. You know, and then I'll try to give you some information about also this two type of artificial. However, our subject today will be about PCP is progressive cavity pumping system. It's a mechanical assist type 
of artificial lift. It's not you use only the, the, the formation cans. Okay, uh, the content of this will try to do as, as much as we can out of this content for this type of artificial lift. Mainly, I will try just to highlight mainly the surface and downhole equipment, uh, some hint about design, because if you understand very well the equipment and how it is running, it's so easy after that uh, to, under, to troubleshooting, so easy to do some failure identifications uh, and just to know uh, what's the reason of that failure, uh, what type of uh, system I need to use, what type of equipment I need to select, uh, and so on. Let me give you some general overview about uh, progressive cavity bombing system and why it's important, you know. You see that it's come at the third one of artificial lift while we are present. We presented the road lift system because it is one of the highest number of artificial, uh, highest number for running with this type of artificial lift as a road lift. And uh, the biggest production came from ESP and then followed by progressive cavity bombing system. When you are here, that name as progressive cavity bombing system, usually, you know, it's uh, the people thinking about heavy crude oils. If you are start to think about how we need to produce heavy crude oil, especially the cold production. Cold production, it means there is no thermal production, there is no steam injection, nothing. Especially if it's cold production, heavy and ultra heavy uh, crude oils, then progressive cavity bombing system is top up to the first type of choice maybe you're thinking to use, you know, even sand, if you have some sand. And so let me show what advantage, what's advantage, what limitation of this that type of artificial. <coughs> what is a VC? And uh, how it is working and so on. The progressive cavity bombing system in a very simple way, it's a mechanical type of artificial lift. Mechanical, that's mean no hydraulics, no electric. Even if today with the new technology is combined with the electric submersible pump, while it is used electric motor, I will show you one slide at the end of presentation how that. But however, still consider as a mechanical type of artificial lift system for time being. It is a positive displacement type. It's not a dynamic. Then so far we, we are presented two type of artificial lift as a positive displacement. The, sac the road lift system, there is rotating sucker road lift system and the progressive cavity pumping system now. And plus the ESP, watch, which it is a dynamic displacement pumping system. What is the main component and how it is running and what is the surface equipment, downward equipment, how it's generating the main function of the artificial lift. How is the work it's doing by this type of artificial lift in order to produce fluids and so on? Usually, uh, the, the PCP, as I said, you have the main part, the downhole pumps, plus the surface equipment, plus the road string and mechanical to just transfer the motor, the motion of the surface equipment to activate the downhole pumps. Then the downhole pumps. As, as we'll see next in the next couple of slides, have two main components. One is called this one is the rotors plus stators. You know, when this rotors is just rotate, it's transfer fluids. You know, when it's rotate, the rotor to rotate, turn it, turn it by the road string. It's transfer fluid by means of progressing. For that reason, it's called progressive cavity bumping system. Progressing from suction, from intake of the bump from the suction here to the discharge. When it's rotated, then the flow move from suction and just progress cavity after cavity, cavity after cavity until we reach to the discharge and then enter to the tubing and, and then the base steps. It's going in just small, small cavity after small cavity. One cavity push the other cavity and, and so on. This lead to a volumetric flow rates being proportional to one, to ro the rotations. When the rotation is increased, the volumetric or the flow rates was increased. It's a very simple technique. So rotor rotate, the cavity, there is a cavity between rotor and stator. I will show you later on what this means. The small fluids just enter the bump. These fluids just pushed 
the other fluids and so on until reach to the end of the bone. What is the advantage of the system? We say that BCP is one of the artificial lifts start to grow. It's one of what we call highest total system efficiency. If you remember what's mean total system efficiency, total system efficiency, that's mean how much powers I lost and how much power I gained from this system. Usually, you know, you have the power, it's hydraulic horsepower, useful horsepower, while it's running, just the bump is running hydraulics. How much pressure, how much rate the bump is lifted, how much horsepower the motor input to the motor in order to run all this system. Really, the, the progressive cavity bumping system, total system efficiency can reach to 70 to 75%. That's mean only losses around 25%, 30% among all the systems. That's why, because have a direct rotation at the surface, have a small motor, small gear reducers here, and then transfer to the road strings. They are not lifting the road string. Only to the total efficiency can reach in the maximum. Then, still here, we have almost more than 20%, 25% higher in the total system efficiency. What else? It's ability to produce high viscous flow. Then, if you start to choose, select your artificial lift system, and you have a fluid with a high viscosity, the first choice come is a progressive cavity system. Then I see if it can work or not. But the first option is a progressive cavity pumping system because depend on progressing in cav progressing some cavity from inside the pump, you know. Also sand. It's 50% of the pump bars down whole pump about is the stator and, and the stator it's rubber is type of rubbers. It's called elastomers then you know it can handle a high volume of sand. For sure, sand will affect, but compared to the other artificial lift, like the road lift system or the ESP or, 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 or all the bombing system, especially the bombing system, it can be one of the best artificial lift to lift that. There is no valves. In these bombs, there is no valves, no reciprocating open or closed valves and so on, you know. And for that reason also, there is no just internal shear. Internal shear is if you have some oil or some motors and with that internal shear can create some emulsion like oil and water, water and oil, just this will increase the viscosity too much and in order to solve that emulsion and to separate the oil from the, from the water or water from the oils at the surface you need some chemical and some, uh, some treatment heating and so on, you know, and this is just one of the good things for this one. It's low capital investment. What's the cost here? You know, we have downhole bumps, it's a very simple bump, plus the road, road strength, plus very small surface equipment, very just very low profile surface equipment, very small surface equipment. Then as a capital investment compared to ESP, compared to road lift system, really it's it's very cheap compared to these two types of artificial. For an example, if I have a road lift system to produce a certain walls with a certain volume of production and the total capital investment was around $100,000. In order to produce the same using as a progressive cavity bombing system, maybe you need 50% uh, of that. But however, you know, there is some um, other cost, you know, related to the operations. Because when I compare artificial lift, I need to compare only capital cost and the capital cost. I need to compare capital plus OBEX, CAPEX plus OBEX, CAPEX plus plus OBEX. But however, here is, if we start to talk about CAPEX, this is one of the low CAPEX artificial lift system. And so the surface equipment is have a very low profile. For sure, you know, the profile of surface equipment maybe is, 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 is bigger than the uh, type like uh, gas lift or something like that. But however, you know, it's very low profile, you know just some well head connection, some motors, gear reducer, sometimes it can be hydraulic, no motor, and so on, you know. It's very simple to install, you know, either it's downhole or self. Downhole, only two pieces, you know, of the pump, you know. It's portable, I can talk all that service equipment from well to the other, and so on. 
but for sure any type have limitation any type of artificial lift any type of machine not even artificial lift but here since we are talking about artificial lift let us to see you know there is a limitation then when i start to select screening my artificial lift i know I, I should not only look to the advantage of that system i also i need to look to the limitation of that system the so operation of that system one of the limitation of of this system it is the pump tips why the pump dips? It's a little bit, you know, one of restricted this system to be used. However, you know, if just a couple of years, a few years ago, you know, we are limited to run this system up to 4,000, 5,000 feet, currently used much deeper than this, you know, feet. But why is there a limited limitation? Remember, this pump is, is rotating. You, I need to rotate the, the, the rotor down all just in order to produce that. And the rotation, it's usually transferred from surface equipment via what? Via the road string. Then I have a limited in the road string torsional force here and, and the torque can be withstand. And the surface equipment even, you know, how much torque can apply to that, especially for heavy crude oil. Another, that, another limitation is it, with the depth is the temperature. Because with the, with the depth, usually, usually the depth with the depth temperature is increased, and 50% of the pump is consists of the rubber, the elastomers, and then with the depth temperature increase, the temperature is is, is also a, a problem for this type of artificial lift. You know, either with the depth or it's shallow. But however, you know, with the depth also temperature is increased and and so on. You know. Not only that, it's sensitive to flow types. Why mean is sensitive to flow type? Remember, the crude oil have different composition inside the crude oils. You know, you have some aromatics inside the crude oils. Usually the aromatics, it's not helping to run with some rubber or plastic or elastomer downhole. This can affect on that elastomers, the downhole elastomer part of the, of, of the bombs. For that reason, it's limited with with, with aromatics, with the flow type. Then some other, uh, some people say, I cannot use the, the progressive cavity bombing system for light crude oils, because with light crude oil aromatic, the percentage of aromatics is increased. However, currently the crude oil, this is type of artificial lift can be used with API more than 40, 40 APIs. In the past, it's limited with 11, 10, 15, less than the API. But currently really, there is a, systems running in, in different area worldwide with API with crude oil API 40 plus and so on. Since there is a rotation for the road and the road rotating inside the tubing, you know, it's has, there is a potential for road tubing wear, especially for the direction wells, horizontal wells, especially if double severity start to increase and so on. Since this type of artificial lift is a positive displacement and depend on, on progressive of cavity, just is, 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 is from, from one, one place to the other place, then it's sensitive to, to what is sensitive in order to progress the cavity and squeeze cavity from one, one cavity to the other cavity. Uh, when the fluid uh, compressibility is increased, this means that the cavity and, and the efficiency of the system increased. The gas is incompressible, it, it, it's compressible fluid, you know, and easy to compress, easy to absorb. This is just a force which is, you are, while you are moving from cavity to the other. Then is, the volumetric efficiency was decreased when the gas risk liquid ratio is increased. Since it's also, uh, it's a positive displacement and it was special design of the downhole bumps in order to just uh, uh, run this bump in a good condition. Usually it's required a fixed fluid level over the bump. It's not like the road lift system while the, the, the fluid level can run at, up to the bump because the, you need here some pressure to push the fluid inside just to start inside the rotor and stay to inside the bump then you need a constant fluid level of the bump. Some people say at least, need at least 300 feet, 200 feet, 600 feet, 500, depend on the bump configuration, geometry, bump size, fluids, condition, uh, different factors affecting it. However, you know, 
also this type of artificial lift is limited to production if I compare to ESP and jet pump and gas lift. This is three type of artificial lift usually used to produce high volume of load. If I compare with this one and I, I need to produce high volume, no, it's limited production. I cannot reach to the maximum production I can get by the gas lift or jet pump or the ESP system and so on. You know. Uh, also, you know, what the application, since we see that this type of artificial lift have what we call, this type of artificial lift, uh, we see what's advantage, what's the disadvantage in, at what type of oil I need to apply it, what's the best application for this system, or what, uh, when I can apply for this system, when I can say yes, the progressive cavity bound can run for this well, can run my wells and so on. First choice come to you, it's sand landed heavy crude oil. If you have heavy crude oil with sand and just crude oil or petroleum crude oil, then you said yes. The progressive cavity pump system, it's a good choice. It can be used for medium crude oil, huh? but remember, if you have a medium crude oil and we need to use that, remember you must have a limited in H2S and CO2. H2S and CO2 will affect on the elastomers. It will affect on, on in the stators, will damage the stators, you know, and for that reason, it's limited. For light crude oil, uh, you know, uh, it must be sweet crude oil. Light crude oil, it's just a, uh, a crude oil with, with API more than 35, 40%, and also I need to be limited in aromatic content. I need to measure the aromatic, how much percentage of aromatics. It can be used for high water cut, usually used for dewatering gas wells. Uh, dewatering gas wells, that's the gas wells, start to produce water in order to reduce the back pressure over the gas wells, we can use this type of artificial lift, especially for the well, like uh, when you start to produce cold big methanes uh, and so on, you know, we, we found the, the BCP, it's, uh, it's used too much in this area. It can be used for all type of all geometry uh, trajectory, you know, with some precaution in design, especially design the road and how it's running, how to centralize and uh, depth is uh, volume, the torque, uh, all that I must be taking into consideration if I start to use this type of artificial lift for a deviated or horizontal well and so on. It can be used to transfer flow, surface, like a surface bump, like the ESP. It can be used as a surface bump to transfer flow from one location to the other. It can be used to reduce the well head pressure. Sometimes if I have a very high well head pressure and I need to reduce the well head pressure over my system, it can be used, you know, because well head pressure, it's one of the main component affecting on your total net, uh, total net lift, you know, it, it, it can be used just to reduce that or transfer float from one location to the other and so on. Also, I can use an area where it's sensitive, you know, area it doesn't like a big, um, you know, a big equipment, it's not, it's, it's not preferred to use in this area and so on. Then this is some application of this is uh, progressive cavity bombing system. For that reason, you know, some some you know publication and some study show that 70% of the heavy crude oils, just 70% of application of this type of artificial lift is using for heavy crude oil. Then so whatever you go, we found heavy crude oil from high percent of these wells, it's running with PCP. Then if you start to say, where is I, the PCP used? Then usually 70% of the use of PCP, it's used for AV crude All that is estimated, it's not exactly 70%. All this uh, figure estimated is done based on some, some data collecting from different field worldwide. And, you know, as estimation can be 75, can be 68, 65. However, you know, they just give you a rough figures about the percentage of where it can be used. Could be methane, could be methane, especially for shallow wells to the watering, the could be methane, yes, it's usually reached around 15% plus or minus. Uh, and for medium crude oil, when you say medium crude oil, from 20 to 30 API, something like that, you know. And for light crude oil, same. Some people use used also for water source oil only to produce water. All that, it's an estimated, huh? estimated figure just to give to you some background, some peer. Where is this type of artificial lift is used, you know? And, and there is more another statistic about that. 
in what place, in what area, what country used more than that in, in one place, in, in one area. If you look to that, said another uh, study, another publication, SPE publication, I just uh, copy this from them, you know. They said the majority also is used in Canada and the Canadian really have uh, very high experience in, in the progressive cavity bombing system. And you see that's a lot of uh, progressive cavity bombing manufacturing, engineering, design came from Canada because the majority of the uh, Canadian crude oil, it can be heavy crude oil or between ultra heavy crude oils, you know, also used in USA and, and with a certain percentage, you know, can be reached to um, up to 10%, something like that. In, in South America, the same, you know, in, in, in East Europe also, there is almost around 10%, something, you know, in all these areas, see South America, South Canada, and uh, USA. This is just some indication. This could be if you start to do some statistic after one, two years, you found all this may be changed because changed. Why? Because the technology of this PCB start now just to go toward this light, not only heavy crude oil, no, also can produce light crude oil. In the past, you know, it's most for cold business in heavy crude oil, because in this area we have shallow wells. Currently, PCB, it's used also for more wells, you know, can be reached to, to, to 11,000 feet, you know. 11,000 feet for sure was, was, was limited in bump size, limited in production, limited in temperatures, a special design is, is requested and so on. But however, you can find this statistic start to be changed, you know. The average used, you know, just as a range in, in, in majority of the world, it's around 4,500 feet. It's almost 1,500 meters, some, some like that. It can produce very low production, but usually it's, it's not up to five, you know. Up to 2,500 can produce 5,000 and more. Really also currently, especially for shallow ones, it can produce more, you know, uh, and so on. Operating temperature is improved in the past. have a very limited operating temperature. It's currently majority of the vehicle used up to that temperature, you know, uh, 185, uh, 200, some like that. It can be used 250. Some manufacturing claim that you can reach to more than that, you know, especially now, you know, there is manufacturing, it's, it's just manufacturing about what we call metal to metal. There is no rubber, there is nothing for that type of artificial, for that type, sorry, of downhole bumps, maybe you can use for high temperature because the metal. However, there is some advantage and disadvantage and so, and so on. Deviation, you know, it's a rotation and there is a torque and, and there was some, you know, deviation, the torque can be increased, especially if the double spirit is high, you know, and it's a little, little bit lim limited. Corrosion handling, it can handle corrosion, but up to a certain limits also the gas, same. For solid, it's one of the best artificial lift bombing system. Huh? We'll start to talk about now bombing system is it's excellent for heavy crude oils and, and so on, you know. Prime mover can be electric, can be gas, it can be even hydraulic system, can be used for offshore. Yes, the system is small, but is not compared to ESP, compared to jet pump, to gas lift, no. Total system efficiency can be reached to 70 and plus. Can, there is some, some units, especially for shallow wells, can be reached to more than 75% and so on. Disadvantage and disadvantage limitation, what is it for progressive cavity? What is a progressive cavity system? Why do I show this all this advantage and disadvantage? What's a component of this system in order to, to make sure that what we are presented as advantage and disadvantage and application is true or not, you know? Okay, when you start to talk about the all type of artificial lift, I said before, we have two main areas, uh, surface and downhole. You need always just to analyze. You need always to know what's my surgical, what's my whole world. The both together is connected. One drives the others. Yes, for sure, my downhole equipment is the heart of the system. My downhole pumps is the heart of the system. Then I need the rest of the system to operate the downhole pumps. For that reason, I need to know what's the downhole, what's the surface in order just to see how to select the downhole, how to select the surface in order to drive my downhole component. Then the PCP component, progressive cavity component, have downhole component and surface component. What is a downhole component for this one? 
Usually the downhole component is the main part of the downhole component. It is the pump, the progressive cavity pump. And mainly the progressive cavity pump have two main components. For sure, have some other components. But there is two main components. Like the road lift system, we said they have five main components. But if you look to the pump downhole, it's uh, have more than 22, 24 pieces. The ESP, the same, and so on. Here have two main components. Stators, this is black one, and this one with the rotor. Stator and the rotor. What else? You have a road strain. This one is just sitting down hole, too far from me. I need to operate that. I need just to, have to operate that through service equipment. I transfer the motion from service equipment to down hole equipment. It's the same like sucker road. It's called the road strain. Then what's connecting the down hole bound? to the surface equipment, this one is called road string. The road string starts from polished road up to connecting to the rotor. Then out, whatever connect to the rotor, up to the surface, to the polished road, this is what we call the sucker road or down or road string. Down or road string can be normal standard roads or just go road, continuous roads and so on. Surface equipment, surface equipment is the equipment required to, to rotate the road string, which can require to rotate the rotor of the down holes. Then, plus, this is surface equipment like, uh, you know, motors and uh, sheaves, uh, clamps, uh, POP, uh, well heads, and so on. Whatever all above the surface, you call surface equipment and so on. Then, I have well heads, I have PCP well heads, and have a drive head. This is what we named as a drive head. This is a drive head, and this is the oil head, my oil heads for the PCP, and so on. Then let us to go deep, part by part, and just to show how it's working, what's the main comp component for each. If you look to the downhole pump, downhole part, it is the progressive cavity pump, the PCP pump. It is the lowest part in the completion system. This is a pump. What's the main component of the bump and how the bump is working? What's the bump configuration? Is there is only one type of bump? Is there is only one configuration of bump? Is there is only one size of bump? How the bump size change if I want to change production? How the bump size change if I need to create much pressure, high discharge pressure to lift more fluid, just uh, uh, more depths and so on. The bumps, this is a bump, the downhole bumps, as I said before, have two main components, two essential components, two main components. First component and important component, it's called stators. Stators, that means it's not running, stable. Bart, it's not rotate. Bart of the downward bumps, one of the main part of the bump is not rotate. This one is the stator, it's elastomer, rubber. This one is the stator, all these, it's called stators. This is just cutway of the stators and this is just small cutway on the stator. What's the other part on the bump? The other bumps called rotors. Then I have stators and the rotors. This is the rotors, which is working inside the bump. This is the rotors. You see, this is the rotors and this is the stators. Then the bump have two main components, rotor and stators. That's enough. That's it, no more. But remember, the stator and rotors are manufacturing as a unique matched pair. Then I need just, I cannot take it stator, uh, you know, a single stator and run for, run with, with different rotors. No, each rotor should be according to manufacturing and manufacturing specification should be matched with a certain stator manufacturer. For sure, you know, there is a stamp for that. There is a certain engineering, certain design for that. But for each stator, it's manufacturing with a unique rotor sensor. What is a stator? What is a rotor? Let us go a little bit deep about that. This is a very important, you know, just to know exactly your tools in order to know what tools I need to select. It's very important to know how your tool is working. What's the construction on your tools in to know how I select the tools, how I troubleshooting the tools, if there is a problem, how I just do some failure analysis if the tool has some problem, 
how to run my my part of the pump or the tool in a very good efficiency is in all of that required from you in order to understand what exact means. Then, if we go to the first part, one of the main important part of the pump is called the rotor. Rotor is a metal, it, it, it's a male part. It's called, it says male and female in this one, you know, like the bolt and nut. It's male and female. This is a male part of the pump. It's a rotating part of the pump. It's a moving part of the bomb. It's single moving part of the bomb. The only part of the bomb moving, it is the rotors. Okay. Then it is a male part of the PCP and the single moving part of the PCP. It has a shape of an external helical, external silica, single helical like this. There's some, you know, different shape like single, you know, but however, you know, in, in, in the standard one, it's external, single helical shape like this. External single helical shape like this. And it's rotated inside stationary but what I show you before, it's called the state. Then this is rotated inside the state. So it's manufacturing with different varying lengths. Because the length of the rotors and the stators is required just as a proportion of how much pressure I need to build, I will show you later on about that. And have different geometry, you know, different geometries, different size, different materials, different coating, depending on your downhole conditions. Then in the market, you'll find a variety of, of rotors, different configurations, different size, different material, different coating, different, you know, what you call this is loop or batch size, a batch length is, and so on, you know. It's general, you know, just uh, it's majority of the people use like a chrome plated from outside. And so. However, all that's chrome plated materials, configuration depend on downhole condition, depend on fluid properties, uh, depend on pressure, how much pressure I need to build, depend on a lot of factors downhole, you know, will affect in, in your rotors and chip. One of the other main part of downhole pumps, it's called the stator. And it's very critical part, really. Because rotor is a steel, it's a part of steel, and I can, you know, I can pull out the wells if I use tubing bump and change, run another ones and, and so on. But the stators, it's, you know, it's almost most of the part of the stator, the main part, not more, the main part of the stator, it's just elastomer rubbers. And this is just the shape of the stator. The outside is a steel. It's housing steel, like a tube, like a pipe. But all these parts, the inside, all these inside parts is the rubber, shape rubber. Then the stator is a key component of the progressive cavity bombing system. How is it in what? How is it in a steel rubber, in, in, in a steel, uh, steel house, steel pipes like this? Then all the inside, the main configurations of this one is rubber, is a plastic, elastomers, certain yeah, special type of that, you know. but how it's fixed it with, with this pipe. It's bounded in that pipe with a special bound. Then there is a lot of parameters here. It can create a problem, can create some damage, and can have some, some failure in the web. This is the elastomer part, and also how it's connecting to the rubber is bounded with a special type of glue. Special type of glue can withstand pressure, temperatures, <coughs> The torsional force because if that's rubber, the bounded, if, if, the, if, if the component, what I it bounded the rubber with the housing here, start to be damaged or loose, then the rubber, all the rubber can come out of, of, of place and can rotate with the rotors. It's then it's very important to select the right elastomers, right elastomer with the right component of how it's bounded to the tube, to the pipe. And, and to how much and, and how much the factors or the downhole parameters affect on that bounding uh, component and bounding rubber and so on. How it's running the PCB is in we said the PCB have two main components. This is what the part what you show it's rotating. This is a part is a stator is bounded to the housing. This one, this is state, this is the black one is stator, 
and this is a rotor, and this is a part, it's a cavity, which is usually it's full with, with a liquid. And this cavity is another cavity, and cavity, another cavity. Then the rotor, when the rotor is rotated, this is the rotor you see, when the rotor is rotated like that inside the stator, the stator is fixed, the rotor is rotated. When the rotor is rotated inside uh, the stator, there is a combination of geometry between the rotors and the stator, the geometry. It's this combination of geometry, it's forming what we call, it's make a formation resulting in a cavity formation. This one, this one, and it's rotating, this cavity, this cavity is creating cavity, you know, formation for this one, you know. This cavity is, is moving axially from the suction of the bump to the discharge of the bump, okay? Then the spire profiles area between the rotor and the stator here just combine to create what we call a closed loop. This is a closed loop, see here? This is from here, it's a closed loop. It's a closed loop, it's a closed loop, it's a closed loop. Then the flow of closed loop to the closed loop, then be a T to isolate this from that. Then this move from this area, from this loop to that loop, the so pressure here, it's have another high pressure is created, more pressure here is in, there is a built up in pressure while it's moved from one loop to the other loop because there is a seal, it's sealing a loop from the other loop, loop to the other loop, which is creating a separate cavity from one to one and so on. How the inside enters and uh, for the progressive cavity, it looks like. Is there is a single type of single figure, single configuration of my downhole pumps? It's uh, how, how the production is calculated, how the cavity is, is looks like. This area is a cavity, this area is a cavity. If you take a cross section area here, you know, it looks like, like this. There's a space here and space here. If I just take only cross section area just down in, in some place area here, we can find this is a rotor, this is a stator. This is what we call this in, as a pump geometry. How it looks like inside, how the production is calculated with this one, how the production is generated from this one. There is different, what we call different pump geometry. What's the pump geometry? The first and conventional and standard and high percentage of using of the pump is called conventional geometry, single loop geometry. Single loop geometry like this one. You have only one loop of geometry of the bump. This is only just cross section area circle and you have this cross section area elliptic like this if you have going at any place in, in, in the state or under road. Many percent of the bumps worldwide, it's used what you call, it is geometry, single loop geometry bump. While the single loop PCB bump is reached to its maximum capacity because single loop each bump have a certain capacity, maximum capacity, but sometimes I need more production. And with whatever bump I have it as a maximum size of the bump, depending on maximum size of the casing and, and the tubing and so on, then I need to produce more. Then when this reach to the maximum capacity, the manufacturing and the engineering start to think about to introduce to the market more geometry, more different geometry. For sure, there is some disadvantage for more different geometry, for more configuration of downhole pumps. But when this type of single loop, initial design for you should be like this, because it's a very simple type of, of uh, progressive cavity bumping system. It's not required a high torque or just not required too much, um, what you call uh, work and so on. In that case, you need to look to the other geometry of the bump. Manufacturing is manufacturing what we call multi-loop pump. Look, this one we just show you, it's single loop pump. That circle here and elliptical here. What if you start to have multi-loop pump? Like you are increasing the size of the cavity here, increasing the size of the cavity here, like a, twice, at least, you know, for the cavity here, or more than twice of the cavity here. But remember, you know, when you're increasing that, for sure there is a limitation. There is different shape of multi-loops. Multi-loops, there is multi-cavity. This, sorry, this is the shape of the rotors. Instead to be rounded like this, it will be elliptical 
will be that shape, will be that shape. And stator, instead to be in that shape, stator will be in that shape, in that shape. Then for sure this will increase production because it was the same size at the same outside the enter, the, the corresponding production will be increased. For sure, you know, there is, will be some limitation. For this one, yes, production will increase, but however, there's some other limitations, some other problems can be created. Use of multi-loop PCP bump, it's lim limited to what? High torque requirements. Instead to rotate, only very simple rotator, rotor like this, inside this, just very simple uh, stators, I need to rotate a rotor like this with different contact area. More contact area, you know, more contact area like this, more diameters, more contact area. More contact area, more it's more friction. More friction is more torque. More torque is, is mean is limited with the, with, the, with, the, with the road corresponding torque can be transferred and safety equipment. However, it's more, more torque, you know, also can be created just as I said, due to more contact area, more seal area, more frictions area here like that. But then the contact between the rotors and stator will be more than one point at more than one point. Then one of these contact can be damaged. There is a possibility of damage here. If there's a possibility of the contact seal area, seal point damage between rotor and stator, for example, if it's 10%, here will be at least 20% because there is two, two more points for contact. Here can be more than 30%. Then the expecting of failures will be higher here in this area. It's not as easy as complex also just to, to measure production and, and just to know how much torque required because they need to calculate the required torque to rotate the system in order to select my suitable surface equipment, my suitable motors, how much motor required to be a surface get reduced our power requirements uh, and so on. For sure, the cost to manufacturing this, it's much higher than to manufacturing this. So for, and the cost mainly here is just in the downhole equipment. And most failures for artificial lift come from downhole equipment. Then not only the capex will be high, even also the obix will be high because each time a downhole bound feel I need to change, then the cost of this one compared to this one will be higher. I would like to conclude here what if you are able to produce your production using single loop, go single loop. If you are forced not to use single loop, go with multi loop, go to the simplest, to the complest one, and so on. Then, at the conclusion, also just compare single loop to double loop, whatever you have single loop or double loop remembers. Try to remember also that the rotor will always have one less loop than the corresponding step. If you look to this one, two, here's one, two, three. If you look here, it's one, it's one, two. It's one, two loop, it's one, two, three. It's one, two, three loop, it's one, to three, four. Then always the rotor have one loop less than the stator. All the stator always have one loop more than the stator. Try to remember this very well in order just, you know, while you are designed, while you are designed especially for calculating the torque. You know, just calculating the torque is very important just for you to know how much loops, how much CD points, how much frictions I need just to calculate. It's not only just, you know, uh, the configuration for loop, even for the batch. See, this is rotors, you know, how much is the, the area between, or the distance between the hub and hub for this one, and see this one, it's a very smooth one. Then what we call batch, rotor or stator batch. Rotor and stator batch, we have what we call long batch. From here, see this cavity is long cavity, long batch. For here, it's called short patch. For sure, this is have some advantage and disadvantage, have some advantage and disadvantage. Here, the ceiling point, you know, if you have a bump, for example, 10 feet, say, and uh, with this patch and the ceiling point, if the ceiling point, it's 10 point for this one, for long batch, 
compared to the same bump with the same length, I have and 50% of the of the batch less than here, then I have more sealing point. More sealing point, that's more pressures. I can seal more pressure, the bump can generate because the pressure from is generated from one cavity to the other cavities. It's multiple, you know, it's it's just accumulated pressure we'll see later on in that one. In, in, in the where we are calculating some pressures. Let us to move to the second part. We will pause about in a very brief way. Remember what I, I presented in this highlights about this one. Then let us to move towards to the other part, which is just transfer the motion from downward bound from surface equipment to the downward bound. It's what we call the road strength. When just the rotor is rotated, and consequently it's just move the rotation to the road strength, and the road strength rotates is downward bound. It's almost, almost <coughs> the same like the road strength of, of road st uh, of sucker road with some special, uh, you know, s some modification, some special design. The road strength for the sucker road can be used, but you know, the running life will be less compared to this one, because this one has some special design as we'll see later on. Why, you know, just this is, should be have a little bit more precaution while we design the road strength for PCB compared to the road strain for road lift system. The road strain for road lift system is always subject to the load. Upstroke load and downstroke load, axial loads going up and down. While here, you know, just the main function of the road strain for the BCP pump is just to transmit power torque. It's just when it's rotating, it's transmitting the rotation, the torque, the power from surface to the downhole pumps. Then, this one also, it's just, you know, it's, it, it's working in the well, it's not under compression. It's lifting itself, you know, just because it should be like, you know, it should be in balance, should be not in compression always. You know. Then the second route for BCB always subject to what? Subject to to combination floats, uh, combination force. It's subject to combination of what? Torsional and axial loads. Then you have a torsional here, is a torsional load and axial loads just for the road string itself, you know, which is just support itself and so on. Torsional axial loads, you know, just it's you need just to the overall stress stated is normally governed by what the torsional loads and the cyclic loads usually sometimes is coming and affected by you know, especially in the rotating area. In the rotating area, you know while you have some rotating, then you can have some bending in that one, then you can have some cycling, what you call bending, uh, bending loads and so on. One of the main important here, since it's rotation, it's a rotating and, and, uh, system and just rotating road strength, the makeup, more and especially the makeup torque, is a very important factor in the torsional loads of this pump. We need to just apply the very right torque for this system and, and so on. Sucker road, it's available just to run the PCP pump. Sucker road is available like the other type of sucker road for road lift system. It's available in conventional, like a connected sucker road, whatever it can be, hollow road, solid roads, and so on, and connecting to each other by via coupling, just jointed sucker road, or continuous sucker road like this one. Continuous sucker road from surface to the bottom, and so on. For, for uh, sucker rod, especially sucker rod strength for PCB have a little bit special configuration, special design. It's the main force in this one is, a, is you know, a torsional force. Since the main force is torsional force, then I need just to have some more, more forces, more specification, different design in the road threaded itself, you know, here. In, either in the thread, also in the contact area while you know, the torque is applied and so on. Then the manufacturing introduced to the market, you know, what we call drive rods. Drive rods is almost seen like sucker rod with some special design in the thread and off and shoulder configurations in this one. The drive rod compares, this is conventional sucker rod and this is a drive rod. If you look to the length of the thread here, compare 
to the length of the thread here, you found the length of the thread here is longer than this one, then this can withstand more torsion like this. Not only that, you know, that we'll see after that in the coupling to connect that, the, the face between the coupling and the shoulder will be much, there is much area. Not only that, also this upset for the shoulders here, you know, here is smaller than this, which allow for more floats, allow for more area, because this is rotated, you know, more area between tubing and roads. More area just also can be what can be reduced conviction size, which decrease the flow pressure loss. So pressure losses here will be decreased because if the area increase, the pressure loss decrease, especially for heavy crude oil. If the pressure loss decrease, then the bump discharge will decrease. Bump discharge will decrease. The power will decrease. The torque will decrease, and so on over the bump. Not only just as I mentioned, you know, the threads is will be longer, and so on. Also the contact area because what you know the force how the design for BCB applied, for example, conjunction with road drive road. This is special coupling with the drive road. Usually the wider contact face, what's the contact face? Contact face is this one, you know, between the roads, between the coupling, this is the contact face, between the road and the coupling. When the contact face is increased, that's what means you have a greater frictions, more friction, more frictions and higher torque capacity can be withstand. Then whatever torque you apply here, you know, this can be absorbed, that torque can be withstand more torque, then you can apply more torque using uh, the drive road with this special type of coupling just to run the same road for the BCB one. For the continuous road, as we mentioned before, continuous road have, have only two conditions. What are the surface? This already covered in the road lift system is the same exactly, one at the surface and one at the bump here, you know. And this from here to here, it's called what? It's a continuous road. Here is a continuous road at the top, especially also uh, same like road. It's at the top of the continuous road, you connected with the polished road, which the polished road is just just passed to the wellhead and so on. Usually the core roads come in, in, in real like this and so on. Then what is the polished road and what's important to the polished road for the uh, PCP? Usually we, feel, we see a lot of problem come from polished road. A lot of customers complain that they have a polished road broken, they have failure on polished road and the polished road broken and failures in polished road, all the road string will fall down uh, in the wells and since the road string, this all road string will fall down in the wells in the rotor will fall down inside the stator, it can be damaged, the stators can have a lot of damage, down holes and so on. However, you know, the polished road, what is a polished road? The polished road, it is the top part of the road string. This is a polished road and this is a road string. Whatever type of road string you have, either jointed road string or just a continuous road string and so on, all the lower part of the road string, this is a road string connecting with a special coupling, it's called polished road coupling, to the polished road. And the polished road pass from what we call dry fit up to the surface like this. Then the first part you see by your eyes and the surface, it is a polished road. And then the polished road pass from the well head and connecting to your road string. What's the function of the polished road? The polished road mainly for the PCB is due to main function. It's transmit the power, what we call the torque, from the surface drive head to the road string. It's connecting to the surface drive head through a special connection here. And when the surface drive head is rotated, it's rotate the polished road. And since the polished road is connecting to the road string, then it's rotate the road string. What else? Also generate or generate seal. There is a flow that's coming from the well, coming from the well to the well head. If there is no seal here, where is the float will go? Will scale to the surface. Then it's create seal in conjunction with what we call. There is what we call, there is a piece of equipment here called stuffing box. Then a combination between stuffing box and the polished road create a seal and uh, uh, to prevent flow to escape to the surface. It's available in different size and lenses and uh, uh, materials and coating. Uh, it's a very smooth, you know, just piece of steel and so on. Let us to move aboard and go to, you know, 
to the surface equipment. What the surface equipment? We already covered down all equipment. What the surface equipment? There are several types of surface equipment for the BCP. This is one shape of the surface equipment. This is a more common shape of surface equipment. Usually, we divide surface equipment to two main parts. Well heads from here and the drive head for here. The drive head, all this one, is mounted here, you know, from here is a drive head. Is mounted on the well heads, this is the well head, via a flange you can use a flange or thread types, you know, just thread connection. Then the well head connecting or just drive head is mounted over the well head, either through flange or threaded connection. What is the basic function of the drive head? This drive head, it's only the function of drive head to just to rotate the polished road. No, there is different function. Remember, there is different function for the drive head. First function is suspend the road string. How you can suspend? You remember I mentioned road string is not run all under compression. You must be suspension, suspend in order to allow the rotor to rotate in a very good way, in a very smooth way inside the step. Then it suspend the road string and carry the axial load. There is axial load, the weight of the road string and the frictions uh, of the road string and the road string and so on. Deliver the torque necessary to drive the BCP. You know, just, it's, we need a torque. A torque just to rotate the polish draw and drive the downhole PCP in what? In a control speed, I need a certain type of speed. I need to control the speed. I need, for example, 100 RPM. I need 200 RPM. I need 150 RPM. Then via using the, this drive head, I can control the speed as I want it, as I design for that, but in also in a very safe way. Remember, you are rotating a piece of steel, a very small piece of steel. There is energy stored in that one. If you are not rotate in a very safe way, this rotation can create a very big damage for surface and, and, the, and the people running around the, the well head and around this. Also, you know, just not only rotate in the surface in, in the safe way, also should be equipped what we call safe release. If you stop this system while it was running, what's happening? You are always apply torque and torque apply for the road string and road string it's just, you know, it's absorb a lot of torque and, 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 and you know, in this one. If you are stop the surface equipment or surface unit, the road start to back to its normal, you know, forces on it just to try to release the torque, the steel, the torque is absorbing. Plus also there is a fluid going downward and the fluid going downward, try to rotate the road string in the other way. If you are not controlled, this one, you can carry, you can have a lot of problem, you know, from the stored energy during the shutting in the surface and so on. Then also prevent produce from, from the skin. This is, a, you know, with a polish, with a polish road, with a stopping box, just can all together can be working in this one, work as a seat. Then the basic function for my drive head, suspend the load and carry the axial load, drive the torque necessary to run the, my system in, 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 with the control and with the required speeds, provide safe release and for the store energy and also pre, just prevent, reduce flow, flow from scaping and so on. Also support the surface equipment like a motor and the reducer it's supporting all this equipment. Then, we know that this is at least the minimum function for the drive head. What is the type of the drive head? Is there only one type of the drive head? No. There is different type of drive head. While we give you flexibility, while you are designing or running in some area to choose the correct drive head and so on. What is your different type of drive head? Mainly there is three types of drive head. Electrical motor, or internal combustion engine, or just hydraulic motors. Either just will be electric motors, hydraulic motors, or just can be like an engine to drive this one. How it's connecting, this is a drive head, can be like a direct drive head connecting to the wall head, can be a, with a, some type of gears drive heads, you know, you have a gear drive head connecting, or can be hydraulics drive head like this.
just I try to give you more picture in this one just to, to see how it's working, how it's running. I, I inform you that uh, one of the main function of my dry fit, it's just what you call, it's preventing the produce flow from escaping to the surface. How we can do that with a combination of the polished rod, the polished rod is rotating. The flow is coming from downwards and I need to have some sort of sealing to the float in order to, pre to prevent the float to escape here. It's what we call stuffing box, what we call well head or just BCP uh, uh, stuffing box. This stuffing box, there is different type of stuffing box by the way in the market, but this is one of the very simple ones. Stuffing box you can, can have from inside a special type of rubbers, you know, the main function of the conventional type of or all type of the stuffing box, not only the conventional type, is prevent produce flow from escaping the system, while it's just divert the produce flow to go to the, the bombing key to the flow line. We have a special backing here, a special backing just to to just you know to work with the polished road to seal the flow from escaping to the cells. It's just this conventional one, the very simple one. It can be run especially it's very good, you know, for vertical wells, for low medium volume speed or just low low, uh, low speed uh, or medium speed wells, low production wells. There is no corrosive environment, no, not to damage the, the rubber or especially the lower parts of this one. It can be flanched type like this or can be threaded type and, and so on. I know I, I don't like to go in details more and more, but however, I, I want to give you just a picture what's mean of, of stopping box with a polish road, how it seal flow. Seal flow, this allows polish road to rotate, meanwhile, prevent flow to go and to pass to the surface here and, and so on. Okay, another piece in the surface, what we call it bumping T. The bumping T and the road POP. Bumping T is a main function, it's a very simple piece of equipment like this. The main function is necessary device, you know, in PCP, just in road lift, the same, in ESP, the same, and so, install to direct flow to the tubing. Direct flow from tubing, come from tubing to the flow line. Then the flow come from tubing from the bottom here to the flow line. And there is a, a, a lot of bumping T have some hole from the other side, which can be used for collecting sample to do some sampling and to, in order to measure the oil cut, water cut, whatever you have from here, or just if you want to inject some chemical and uh, or just to measure pressure and so on, you know. Plus the POP, POP just is a safety device. Safety device, purpose of POP mainly is safety for that. This internal of the POP can be like that, two ramps can be closed over the polished road in case if I want just to close below the POP, if I want to change for, for example, the bombing T. If the bombing T damage and so on, and there is a flow, and there is a gas come from the well, how to just to prevent that, how to isolate it, my wells, then I need to close from the bottom. This is what we call the POP. There is a combination, you know, between bombing T and, and the POP. There is a, what you call composite special design. And, and more and more, it's not only that, you know, there is more combination special equipment can be used for the top of the well heads. One of the other important piece in for the PCB, it's the clamp. The clamp here, you know, just uh, for the progressive cavity pump, the drive clamp, what we call the drive clamp here, it looks what looks drive shaft and polished rod. What's mean of drive shaft? This is a polished rod and this drive shaft which transfer the rotary motion from the drive head to the polished rod, from the polished rod to the my rod string and so on. The drive clamp transfer the weights of the rod string to the drive head through the drive shaft also. Then it's doing two function, you know. It's just connecting the, uh, the polished rod to the drive shaft while also the drive clamps is holding all the loads, uh, all the loads supported by the road strain to and, and, and holding and transferred it to the drive head and so on. What's the prime movers? As I said, you know, we have two main prime movers, can be electric, can be diesel engine 
or just engine, combustion engine, gas engines, whatever you have. For sure, this it's, uh, it's, it's, it's for the area you can use while there is no electric electricity, there is no electric power, and so on, you know. It can work as diesel, gas engine. It can be, you can change the speed here through some governor. You can change your speed and so on. But for sure, it's required very high maintenance. And uh, it's not flexible, flexibility for, you know, for changing, you know, some of, especially for the, some of automation, some of uh, changing speed, can change the speed, but up to a certain limit. It's a little bit expensive, uh, required too high, especially in the maintenance and so on. But the electric motor, really, it's, it's very low maintenance, but cost for sure is high, but at operating cost will be much lower. Capex high, operating cost much lower, energy cost is less, and, and so on. I can connect into the variable speed drives and I can have different speed to run my systems and so on. This is another type instead to use just uh, power, uh, like electric power or just uh, engine and so there is what you call the hydraulic power. Hydraulic power connecting to the drive head like this and there is a, a drive, a hydraulic motors connecting to the drive head which just can generate it for me the rotary motion which is just transferred to the road string. Uh, like, like the other artificial lift system, I need to have some surface controllers. And this controller can be available in two different configurations. It's a simple controller, what called like a switchboard for ESP, you know, just a fixed speed. I cannot change the speed. I can use controller to control my 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 downhole equipment, uh, you know, typically designed for protection operation, just to protect the operation, you know, and uh, it can can operate it by motor, you know, it can be uh, protect or, or operate or just control by, you know, just you can you need by by operating the, the motor load or torque torque you know what's the maximum load for the motor what's the maximum load based on that you can protect the system either shutting the system or restart the system you know if it's equipped with auto restart and so on it's low capital cost because you have limited function you know on and off uh, some monitoring torque you can put some torque to monitoring some monitoring is operating um, and for the uh, for the surface equipment, surface motors, uh, and so on, you know, if you are connecting some some switch, surface switch can be give you some read read for that. But if it's combined with what you call variable speed, it's we call variable speed controllers. And the variable speed controller, if you have flexibility, variety of flexibility, you know. It's configured just to you know, change the speed. Says for your system, can you control your speed? Change the pump speed. Change the speed. Or you know, control your there is one very important piece of my downhole equipment is what you call it's tag bar. what is it bar? tag bar it's one of the downhole equipment and the tag bar normally it is included with your state Remember, I said that the bump have a rotor and stators, and I run the rotors via connecting the rotor to the road string, and I keep running road string downhole. What will stop me down? Because the bottom of the stator is open. As in, there is some guy that should be stop me just to say, you know, yes, this is the bottom of your rotors, of your stators. You need to stop here, you know. Just you need to do your spacing correctly in order to match the, the, the rotor with the stator, the two cavity for two together, you know, the two batch for two together. Then there is something what we call tag bar. The tag bar normally, as I said, you know, is running as a integrated part of the uh, stators. And usually it's required all the field people and say that it is a reference 
to facilitate the installation. When I need to stop, I also space out or spacing in my road string and so on. In the market, there is different configuration, different size, but the function is the same. It's the same, just use add indicators just for reference for to facilitate the installation, especially for spacing out my rotors and sucker root string. There is another important piece here I just to like to highlight to you, just to show you what we call tubing drain. Tubing drain here, just to talk tubing drain, nibble and so on. It's provide what we call alternative mean to drain your production float. Why I need to, to drain my production float? I need to drain my production float, you know, just uh, what's inside the tubing. Yes, with the rotor and rotor, for example, stuck inside the stators. If the rotor is stuck inside the stators and we're not able to go out of the well, or just have some blood due to sand, due to debris, due to swelling of the stator and so on, then as a safety point of view, it's, 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 it's not easy just to pull your tubing wet because if you have the rotor stuck inside the stators, you need to change the downhole bumps. You need to change the downhole configuration in order to run your wells. How to do that? The rotors is not an easy to fish or just to be as rod Then in this case, you need to pull your tubing. To pull the tubing wet with the full of the string is unsafe completely. You know. Then in this case, usually the people which expected to have some problem like that is run what we call the tubing drain, you know. The tubing drain is installation, it's just a nibble, you know, run down hole, you know. And there is different type of, of, of that one, of, of the, of the uh, tubing drain, you know. There is different type, house open, house shear. It's some, some of them was just shear pin, some of them like a sleeve uh, and so on. Plus some road shear coupling, you know. If I have a road with the rotor stuck inside, the stator and have the road inside the well. Not only I need to drain the tube, even I need just to, to free up my road in order just to pull out for the tubing. It's not an easy as operation point of view at the well side to pull the tubing with the road itself, you know. Because remember the length of the tubing and the length of the road is different. Usually standard length of the tubing in average, you know, it's around six feet. Standard length of the, of the road is Feet. Then each time you need to cut the, the road if you need to pull two together. In order to avoid all that and just to, to go smooth, there are what we call road shear coupling at the bottom, just in the top of the of the rotors, uh, just at the top of the rotor, you run between the rotors and the road string. In case you have some stuck like this, you can shear and pull out for your road string and so on. What else I have as the as, as a PCP, you know, just uh, accessories and, and some other tools, you know. Remember, a PCP run in the oils and the oil can be deviated and, and I need to centralize the oils, I need just to protect the tubing, I need to protect the roads. There is a lot of what we call like this, road guides, different type of road guides, different type of coated coupling even. There is a coated coupling like this. Road guide can be installed at the field sites like this one, you know, snap on the guide. Or road guide just already installed at the factory and come to the to the feed on the road itself and to run. This is a part of success where you need to consider while you design and selecting your equipment and your system also. Tubing anchor also the tubing anchor, you know, it's like as a road itself. I don't like my tubing to rotate. Remember, the tube the, the road is rotating and the, the the rotor is rotating and there is a force. You know, just if there is especially a contact between road tubing, you know, there's a force just in, we have the tendency to rotate the tube. The tubing rotator is no tail. It's like tubing anchor, what you call uh, anchor. It's not return tool, it's different than the tubing anchor of the road string. Tubing anchor of the road string is prevent the road string to move up and down. Tubing anchor of the progressive cavity bump is prevent the progressive cavity bump from rotating, you know, just from the, tu the, the tubing from rotating. You know. It's avoid the rotation and consequently can be back off for the tubing, you know, and so on. 
it is just some howling, you know, it's just like a blade like this. When you set this blade is open in this way, if you open this way or decontact, then whatever you are rotated is inside the tubing, rotate the tubing, this can be rotated, this can be fixed, the tubing in this case, and so on. And this is just a picture of the tubing drain, as I mentioned to you, you know, before, there is different type of the tubing drain, you know, some like this, some like this. This could be sleeves with a special shear bend. If you are apply some pressure down hole, you know, here, and we can open this broken shear bend, you can open, there is some shear, what we call some rupture desk here. If you apply more pressure, this can be open and make a communication between tubing and casing, and then you can pleat sorry, all your fluids to the casing and so on. What else we have here? One of the very important item or part you need to consider for your PCP is what we call recall control. It's, it's, it's a very critical for the PCP to have the recall control. To control, you know, just the rotation of the road string and vice versa when you stop the web. This is stored energy, you know, torsional strain stored in the road string. When you are rotating the road string like this, there is a strain, torsional strain rotating this one. And also there is a differential pressure between the, the fluid in the tubing and in the annulus. If you stop, you know, the, row, the fluid tends to go down and down. In order just to prevent all that, you need to have the well head, your drive head, equipped with something just to have slow release for this one, slow stop for this uh, potential other problem for all that. Uh, this is just uh, one of the very important slides. I mentioned that as the technology it changed, sometimes for deviated wells, for horizontal wells, for some other problem wells, maybe I'm not able to run with the road strain because I need to rotate my progressive cavity bumping system. To rotate progressive cavity bumping system, all the previous technology, standard technology, said I transfer the, the rotation via the road. Really, the manufacturing sort of thinking about how we can combine the ESP down all motor configuration because the motor rotated shaft and here the road string rotate the shaft. Then can I eliminate the road string and use the down all motor to rotate my down all PCP pump and they introduced what we call ESP PCP, just a combination between ESP pump, ESP motors, not the bump, and the, the PCP pump. Then here all the down all configuration of ESP is the same except the pump, is removing the pump. They have the motor, they have the seal, they have the intake, is the same. And you can have separators, it's all the same. And except the pump, instead to have the uh, ESP pump, it's here installed with what we call BCP pump. Then the PCP pump is running with this one. But since the motor of ESP, it's a high speed motor, then you need to run what we call here something gear reducers to reduce the speed. And also since the, the rotor is not running, you know, just a very smooth and in, in, in eccentric way, then you need to have what we call flex shaft assembly to convert the eccentricity of the rotor shaft to just the right rotation of the motor. This is just, I like to show you as a hint, you know, about Currently in the market, yes, technology change, yes. There is a combination, what we call PCP, ESP, and so on. Uh, I don't know about the design, you know, just uh, the time, it's maybe it's not limited. We can start, uh, maybe you can go through the design next time in, in, in the first 15, 20 minutes, some design and so, um, or just 30 minutes for the BCB, because I don't like to go much longer especially in the end of the week like this. Thank you and uh, we see you next time. Thanks for this enlightening session. Now we'll move on to answering um, a question we have here. Um, someone says, how um, can we reduce the downhole pressure using the PCP? You know, you are writing downhole pressure using PCP, you know, because the PCP is a pump. 
pounds, you know. There is a flow, you know, just if there is a pump down hole and this pump is rotating, the rotating is creating some what you call, especially for the first cavity of the pump, it's like a low pressures. Low pressures in the, the pressure always tends to go to the low, in the direction to low delta B. Then when you start to go to low delta B, the PCP rotor start to rotate and they move this low pressure to a little bit higher cavity then the lower cavity will be low. Then almost in the intake of the PCP will have a low pressure due to the rotation and moving the cavity. The cavity moving from down hole up, moving from suction to up. Moving this cavity from low pressure to a little bit high pressure, then it's leaving a gap down hole with low pressures. Okay, okay what thank else? you, Dr. Harib. Uh, that's about it for the questions today. It was a pleasure having you today on Pi Petro, Dr. Mohamed Ghalib. Thanks for joining us. I'm very glad I was able to attend one of your lectures again. Um, this was a, a very insightful session. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in with us today. Thank you, Joanna. Shukran for it.